My name is Marcia Venerdibus. I am a student in, uh, from the University of Montreal. I've just accomplished my bachelor's degree in criminology with the special, specialization in analysis. And I'm already starting my master's degree also in criminology at the same university, but this time I'm focusing on cyber crimes. Um, so today I will be sharing with you the research project that I've accomplished through an internship with Cantonave Quebec in their cybersecurity department, which is called Vigil. And the research project is called Social Bots, Malicious Use of Social Media. So we'll be talking uh, today about social bots, about social media platforms. Uh, we'll be talking about trolls. We'll be talking about political interference. And we'll be talking about disinformation and other kind of very interesting stuff. Um, so bear with me. English is my second language. So I hope I won't be making too much uh, pronunciation mistakes. And I hope you'll enjoy this talk. So for the agenda of the day, I will go through every general step of a research um, to give you really an insight of what we've done. But also at each step, I will try to give you some tools and tricks. So uh, if you would love to replicate a study similar to this one, you could do so after this talk. And also I will focus on the results because this is my... The, the part that I'm, I think is the most interesting. And also, if you're just here because the subject really interests you, well, this is probably the, the moment you're waiting for. So without further ado, we'll already start with the um, definition of political interference, because I don't want to take for granted that everyone know what it is. Uh, this is quite a complex uh, concept to understand and to explain in like 30 seconds. But the simplest definition that I could give you is that political interference happens when a country or a group of people try to uh, put some discord between citizens or they try to manipulate public discourse, discrediting the functioning of a electoral system uh, through different kind of tactics for their own personal gain. So political interference has happened through through thousands of years. So this is not new. The only thing that's changing is how they are doing it. And exactly, we're starting to see it more happening uh, with the aim of social media, especially with the help of disinformation. So I know there will be there will be other talks talking especially about disinformation today, so I won't go too deep into that. But simply, disinformation, it's really false information that is spread online to fool its readers. Um, and we also see that they do use the help of social bots to spread those inform disinformation online uh, to manipulate the public discourse through a political campaign. Uh, so social bots, what they are, uh, they are basically robots, actually they are scripts that are put online on a social media platform uh, to act like a human online. So they can do exactly like every user can do on their social media profile. So they can create a user, they can create uh, tweet, they can post stuff, they can share stuff, they can like stuff, and they can also exchange with other humans or other bots. So what they are used for, um, they have multiple purposes depending on their, their goals. What I mean by that is that they do have some legitimate use, like for helping, facilitating, a, um, the marketing of a company uh, by putting some content online for them or by answering some common question that we often get. We all at least once talked with a social bot online, but well, they did the job. So they're great. Uh, it's really a legitimate use of them. But there are also other use of social bots that are more so illegal or we could say immoral. And uh, what I mean by that is when they are creating harassment online or when they are creating a uh, hate speech online or they're uh, spreading disinformation online. So keep in mind that they will act differently depending on their goals. 
that leaves me with the uh, problematic. So the problematic is the why. So why are we doing this? Uh, why should we care and why should you be listening today? <laughs> the first reason is the rise in cases of political interference globally. So we did all saw it in the U.S. Uh, 2016 presidential election. We saw it uh, happening again in the 2017 uh, with the Macron leaks in France. We saw it happening again in the Netherlands in 2018. And we also saw it in Africa, especially in Ghana in 2018. Also, there were the uh, CSC, so our Center Security Establishment, said in a paper in 2019 that there was a high likelihood of foreign interference activities online, so on social media, during the uh, elections. Also, we do see a sophistication and a humanization of social bots online. What that implies is that it's getting way harder for researchers, practitioners, and even the social media platform to spot those bots online, to spot the social bots. And obviously, because of the U.S. 2016 election and other events, uh, they were getting more um, social and political pressure to do something about it. So people wanted the social media platform to control and prevent those kind of events to happening again. They did so put put out some measures and we're now at the stage where it's the time to validate the effectiveness of those measures. So to do so, we uh, we wanted to uh, draw a portrait of the activity of social bots during the 2019 Canadian federal election campaign. So this is a descriptive research, and we had especially three parts. Well, they were sub-objectives uh, of the research. So the first one was to establish a list of accounts uh, identified as possibly being active social bots between September um, 26 to November 11, 2019. The second one was to de determine how uh, the identified social bots inserted themselves into the political discussion during the collection period. The third one was to study the point of view of experts on the role of social bots in matters of political interference in order to deepen the first results that we obtained. Um, so for the researchers out there, we did use the mixed method methodology, so com combining the quantitative and the qualitative uh, data together. Um, and also for the uh, quantitative methodology, uh, so the co collect of the data was done way before I started working with Pensanat Quebec. Um, it was the cut a period of 47 days, uh, starting at the end of September and finishing early November. Uh, the data source was directly on Twitter with the help of Twitter API. And the initial sample went up to 4 million of tweets, representing uh, more almost 400,000 of profiles. So this is a lot of <laughs> data collected. Um, so to do so, to collect the data, uh, because on Twitter people use hashtag, they did use hashtag to collect the data. So some of those, uh, some of the 48 hashtags uh, were really generic. So basically just referring to the election in general. And other ones were clearly either in favor of some party and other ones were clearly against other parties. So we really only concentrated our uh, effort on those two. They were the main, um, the most popular one on the, uh, on that election. Um, so also for the data, for, for the collection of the data, uh, because there is some important limits that you need to work with when you're using the Twitter API, I'm talking about the limits of the request that you can do. But for example, at the time, it was a limit of request at every 15 minutes, so you had to work with it. So what they did is that they created three machines, which they called MIT1, MIT2, MIT3, and those machines were basically Python scripts. 
and each Python script would run every hour at different time, but still every hour in difference. And each one were responsible of different hashtags. Those hashtags were, um, and when, when I mean they were collecting hashtags, they were collecting tweets, a response and retweet that would refer that had this hashtag in it. And at the end, um, all those data were going through MSSQL server. And we also had a, a algorithm on the MSSQL server to make sure that there were no duplicates because yes, people tend to uh, use more than one hashtag in one tweet. Um, so how to replicate? So I will give you a couple of tricks if you would love to replicate something like that. Um, first, you need to know how to program. So you need to know how to code. Uh, the big advantage of the Twitter API is that you can choose the language of your choice. We use Python, but you could use other ones. Um, next, we did uh, need to have a virtual machine or a computer that is fully dedicated to the collection of the data uh, because you can't work uh, at the same time on it. So just for us, for example, it took uh, almost for uh, seven weeks. So keep in mind that you couldn't work on your computer for seven weeks. Um, also, you need to have enough database uh, to store all those data for us, just to give you an idea. And we're in Canada, where it's not the country where people use the most Twitter for incorporation of the states, for example. Uh, we had a total of 2,500 uh, tweets per day on an average, and it went up to 200 tweet, uh, uh, per 200,000, sorry, tweet for in, on the election day. So that's really something that you have to keep in mind. All those data needs to go somewhere. Um, also two quick advice from me, make sure that you really understand the limits of the API, because if you don't, uh, you could, this could really have an impact in the generalization that you can do of your research of your research and your results because you don't really have all the data, all the tweets that we're putting out there in your um, in your event. Uh, and also, you could use the Twitter API Premium that could save you some time if you do have uh, the money because, yes, it does cost money. Uh, so, to come back to my research, because it was an internship of less than four months, I had to concentrate all my efforts into um, a smaller sample. So I only use a 5% of all the users uh, collected, but I cho choose the users that were posting the most. What I mean by that is that those less than 5% of users represented 73% of all the tweets. So that's roughly 3 millions of tweets posted in less than seven weeks. So that's a lot of tweets per account and per day. Um, so, and for the qualitative method, uh, I did do three interview with different experts uh, in the field. I won't go too deep into who they are and their speciality because I want to keep their anonymity. Um, but, uh, but, all the, those information, there will be more information, sorry, directly on the paper that is coming up soon if you're interested in knowing more. Um, so for the results, that's the, my favorite part. Um, so the first objective was to found, the goal of that objective was to found some social bots online. We wanted to create a list of social bots. So how can you find social bots online? Um, first thing uh, to consider is that, yes, in the scientific literature, you can find some indicators that could help you to guide you to find some bot online. Uh, the thing is, uh, if you do so, it does take quite some time. So, yes, you can go on, find, have your account and kind of check all the boxes to see if they, they do or they do not have that specific uh thing there I found, but that will take you a lot of time. I know that other people uh, did some graph uh, related stuff. So they, they, they started with one social bot and they started to check with who they were exchanging, who they were following, who were following them, et cetera, to, did, to do some sort of network with them. Uh, this is a really great way to go, but this is a really long 
a way to go <laughs> if you have thousands of users to uh, look at. Um, so in my case, I did use the Barometer tool. So this is a tool from the observatory on social media from the Indiana University. And uh, the first result that we got was actually that more than 3,000 of uh, users were not found by this tool, and mainly because uh, actually more than the app were deleted, so actually the users really deleted their own profiles, and the other app was suspended. So it's really Twitter because those accounts were, went against their rules, suspended those accounts. So with the remaining accounts, we did got the results. So how Barometer works, it does have four indicators um, and the, uh, all those indicators get a score on zero to five. And then after that, they made a total with that and that we use the score, the final score. score. So for the, um, as you can see, the vast majority, so actually, 78% of my sample got uh, 0 to 0 0.9. So they were really highly a human. And then we have a huge drop and we go on the 5. So 5 is really 5 to 5. Uh, so the highest score that you could get. So that's the high highest score that you could get, which means that there is a high likelihood that they are robots, they are social bots. So we can see here the list of those social bots. Um, as you can see, because I added some color in there to help you recognize them, but some of those were clearly saying that they were social bots, either on their username or others, they were saying it in their uh, description. Uh, so that so clearly they are not here to fool anyone. They are really saying it out loud that they are social bots. Something else that was kind of surprising is that some of those accounts were referring to drugs uh, with chemicals, puffing online and stuff like that. And other ones were uh, only talking about arms and guns online. So that was quite surprising. I put some pictures in here um, so you can have an idea of what they look like. You could go on and check them out. Last time I checked, they were still uh, alive. You could say they were still on, but it's a possibility that they could have been suspended since. I don't have control over that. Um, so I did grew up the list because I did include uh, the all the accounts that had the score of 4.8 and 4.9, simply because other studies did so, and because, as you can see, even an account that has a 4.8 score still uh, says itself that it's a robot. So, all right. so for the qualitative results, uh, after doing my interview, coding them, analyzing it, uh, I did uh, end up with some really interesting themes. And the first one is about um, social bots, obviously. And the first thing that the experts said about that is that we need to remember the notion of intentionality. What we mean by that is that sometimes uh, when we uh, focus too much on researching robots, we forget that they are some humans behind them. Uh, because yes, they are script, they are robots, but somebody wrote that script, somebody um, created them. So we need to uh, not forget that. Also, the mixed impact. What we mean by that is that it's not because you do find a bot online, a social bot online, that automatically it's disinformation, all they are saying is disinformation, or that they are trying to do political dis uh, discourse online, uh, political interference. So we really need to be more careful about that. And the final one is about the legal and illegal use. Uh, because yes, I didn't knew that and didn't saw that in the uh, scientific literature, but yes, some but are going to try to to use some popular event like a political campaign to spread out and do some kind of marketing or some kind of propaganda about their illicit product online so they can have more views, basically. So this is why I did found in my um, sample, even though uh, I was searching, we need to remember that why I did found those accounts is because we did posted a lot of tweets, uh, including hashtags about politics. 
but they end up selling drugs and arms, uh, guns, sorry, et cetera. So uh, that's something that was quite surprising. And uh, also the other theme was about trolls. So um, what they were saying about this one is that it's getting really easy to go wrong about them. And what I mean by that is that we could it's getting way harder to uh, difference uh, trolls and bots. Because yes, just like one uh, expert said, they did found, um, they were trying to find some bots online and they did find one account that was posting more than 250 times a day. And they went up meeting that person. And he was a guy who was really not uh, liking Justin Trudeau and really didn't want him to be um, to to win the election, who so was just constantly posting uh, stuff against him. So that's something that we really need to keep in mind. Even though some accounts didn't have the score on five on five, uh, we need to be careful on the attribution that we do on their account uh, and on who they are. Um. Also, the other thing is the reactive measures. So um, something really interesting is the fact that, yes, like I said at the beginning, um, the social media platform uh, are putting out some measures and they are, they are suspending accounts that are highly possibly social bots or they are putting this information online, etc. But the sad thing is, is that they are often doing it a little bit too late. So after uh, after they have posted all those, those stuff online. Just like we saw in my sample, a lot of the, those accounts were suspended. So yes, they were suspended, but they were suspended after the election. So they had the time to post everything they wanted to post during the election campaign. And after that, they were suspended. But after that, it doesn't really uh, do do something. It, it's already done. But the other thing is we need to keep in mind the perverse uh, effects of suspending accounts. Because like the expert said, um, uh, we tend to see more and more users uh, going on alternative social media platforms that are really like free speech uh, marketing approach, um, like Gab, Carter, and other kind of in other ones, uh, obviously I could do a whole talk only about that, but that's something to keep in mind. Is that really the best solution? And also the legislative level, um, because yes, there is not enough laws about this. We're only counting and we depend on social media platform to do something about this. Um, so the problem, disinformation, political interference, etc., is on social media, and we depend on social media to do something about it. Um, the so the next objective. Uh, so this one was really to give you an idea of the content that they put out online during that campaign. So we did got a lot of results. <laughs> on this uh, part of the re research because we did do a lot of uh, analysis. Um, so the first result that we got is that the most surprising to, to me was the fact that 72% of the accounts that created 5 on 5, so their highest scores, actually were only posting in Japanese. And also 87% of the key content were actually retweets. So what that means is that clearly the social bots online were there to repost stuff and not to create stuff. And also, uh, we did find, found a lot of links into the content. And we did found that three accounts, Jersey Party, Nostasia, and Kanye's Blue, were three accounts that to this day are suspended by Twitter. And they were big generator of content uh, in my sample. Also, we did found that uh, through the hashtag analysis that many, there were clearly more hashtags that were in favor of Justin Trudeau than, uh, than for Andrew Scheer. So we can see the results here, but the time is running, so I won't go too deep into that. If you have a question about this one, it will be my pleasure to answer. So for the qualitative results, so uh, we did the, the more important theme that came out of this one was the tactics. 
because we did find there, there are plenty of tactics online about this information, political interference. I did find out a total of 16 tactics, but uh, clearly there were two tactics that were used in my, in these social bots that I found. So the first one is to share and comment a lot on the same profiles with the goal of spreading out uh, in helping to have more views on that specific account. Um, so uh, just like we saw, three of those accounts are to this day suspended, but they were clearly big generators of content. The other one is to do this predict the election of a candidate. As we saw in the 2016 election, um, presidential election, clearly uh, they were trying to uh, to help the election of one president to the detriment of the other candidate. So, and we, if we look at the hashtag analysis, we do can see that clearly there is more one. Um, they were the social bot identifier were trying to help the election of one candidate through the detriment of the other one. So just like every other research out there, there, there is some important limits in my study. The first one um, is the fact that I only use a sample of 5% of the users, uh, even though they were uh, the users that posted the most, etc. It still does have a huge implication on the attribution and the interpretation that we can do of my results. So it's not because I did found some results that we can just generalize them on the entire campaign and are that we can take for granted that those results, um, that, that because we did find some hashtags that were more, sorry, because we did find more hashtags on, uh, that were in favor of the central that this has somehow influenced the end results of the campaign. So for the further studies, I would love to invite other researchers, practitioners, to, uh, to work together and to compare results because in the scientific literature, it's clear that we see a sophistication and humanization of social bots, but we don't know exactly how. So this uh, working together could really help to do so. And also uh, at some point we will have to focus on locating those social bots and not only detecting them, even though we don't have the localization, we um, if you really want to make some hypothesis on political interference, and if we want to know where those social bots are coming from, we will have to put some more effort into that. So uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, I really enjoyed do this, doing this talk. I hope you will. Uh, I hope you won't hesitate to ask me your question. I will be on Discord through uh, the day and I will be at 2 p.m. on the discussion panel. You can find me on LinkedIn. Here is my email for other questions. And obviously, the, uh, it will be a publication about this that's coming really soon. Uh, so if you follow me, you, will, you won't miss any of that. So thank you so much for listening and have a great conference day.